Look at that, they clink. Run out. Yeah, where the fuck? Martin Kenny and all the councillors who are present from Wisconsin and from Anna and different places. I haven't seen them all yet, so I'm not going to even attempt to name them. They're all very welcome. <laughs> Matt Carthy is Sinn Féin's candidate for the upcoming European elections, and unfortunately he's at a, a family event today, and he wasn't able to join us, but he sent his best wishes to... Mrs. McGurl and all the McGurl family and everybody here. Uh, thanks, Matt, Thank and good luck in the European elections. I now call upon Councillor Martin Kenny to read the proclamation, please. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and the dead generations to which she received her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland through us summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizens Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exile, her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe. But relying in the first of her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long suppression of that right by a foreign people and a government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished, except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times in the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign and independent state. We pledge ourselves and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, to its, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberties, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, and declare its resolve in pursuit of the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious to the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which has divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a parliament, of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and, and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We pledge the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who, shall, who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august, de of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McJumada, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kant, James Connolly and Joseph Plunkett. Go to me give a card. And uh, I want to pay tribute to T.G. Cahar and the Fly Live programme, which this week has run for three hours every night, bringing a feast of Irish traditional music and song to the nation and to the international community. Absolutely wonderful for that event for the first time to be in the north of Ireland. Giorgio McGurr and Brady McGurr are lifelong friends of myself 
I've met many people in the course of the struggle, which I've been involved in now for well over 40 years, and many exceptional people, and some of the most exceptional, among some of the most exceptional that I have met are the McGill family. Not just John Joe and Brady, but their sons and their daughters, all very, very good and decent people, and people that I am very proud to call my friends. It takes a lot to drag me away from anywhere at the beginning of August when most people are on holidays, but when I got the invitation to be here for the 25th anniversary of uh, John Joe's uh, death, I wasn't going to miss being in Battle of Moor tonight. Battle of Moor is a great town, a town where we have had huge support down the ages, and Leitrim, of course, is a fantastic county. It's certainly not one of the most populated counties in Ireland, and it's certainly not one of the richest counties in Ireland, but in my opinion, some of the best people in Ireland live in this county. People who have supported us through many hard and difficult times, and I am being here this evening, I want to pay tribute to all of the Republicans in County Leitrim who have been supporting through thick and uh, thin our struggle for freedom, justice, independence and peace. Of course, if you mention Ballinamore anywhere on the island of Ireland, people all know about John Joe McGurr because he epitomised everything that is good about our struggle. A man who was admired and respected, a man who was a leader, and of course the history shows that he was involved in the IRA campaign in the 1930s, played a leadership role in the border campaign, was elected as a TD to Leicester House, and also a key part in reorganising republicanism in the early 1970s. Or his decisive contribution in 1986, John Joe always led from the front. He was, and he remains for republicans, not just here in Leitrim on the border, but across our country, an inspirational leader. 20 years on from the time we laid John Joe to rest, he continues to inspire us. And why is this? It is because John Joe knew about struggle. He knew about strategy. He knew what it meant to carry the burden and the responsibility of leadership. And he knew that at all times the struggle needed to move forward. He also knew about our past, but he was never a hostage to it. He was a county councillor from 1960 up until the time of his death, during years when some Republicans, for some Republican, Republicans, electoralism was a bad word. But not for John Joe McGurr. He knew that popularising our struggle and making it relevant to people was the way that we would bring about Irish reunification and freedom. He didn't fear carrying the Republican message of freedom and justice and peace into political institutions. Indeed, it was John Joe and people like him who led the way for people like me coming behind him. John Joe knew, as I know, that partition was an injustice. And it was an injustice that John Joe committed his entire adult life to ending. And it is an injustice that we, we remain uh, committed to ending today. In the past few weeks have not been good weeks for the political process in the North. The peace process needs political leaders with the skills and the craft of John Joe McGurl at this time. And political unionism needs to realise that nothing can be gained by continually feeding the insatiable appetite of those who see life through the red, white and blue prism. People who are violently opposed to this process because at the heart of it they are opposed to equality. And history is littered with unionist leaders who made this fundamental mistake. I have 
never been selective in condemning and challenging violent attacks on the peace process from whatever quarter. I do not look over my shoulder. My face and the face of this party is firmly focused on the future. A unionist leaders who failed to condemn the attacks and injuries to 56 police officers and the Lord Mayor of Belfast fail not just the forces of law and order, but fail the peace process itself. The history of our peace process tells any observer uh, one thing. When Republicans make agreements, we stick by them and we implement them. This week's decision by the Democratic Unionist Party to abandon the agreement reached on the future development of the Mays Long Chess site is a mistake. It is a mistake not just because it jeopardizes much needed investment and jobs, but also for the message it sends to the vast majority of people, nationalists and unionists, who are rock solid behind the peace process. Some in the extremes of political unionism believe that they can unpick the Good Friday Agreement. Moves like this actually give those people succor. <coughs> However, it ignores the political reality and ignores the fact that the vast majority of unionists want to see this peace process succeed. They are not interested in refighting battles that are long over or harken back to a time that has long gone. They want to see their political leaders get on with the job of reconciliation and delivering in government. They are embarrassed by the antics of the thugs who attacked the police in recent weeks in Belfast while they were wrapped in the Union flag. The orange state that I grew up in is long gone, and most sensible unionists realize that that is a good thing. So it is time that political unionism woke up to this reality, and the choice for unionism is very, very clear. Come and share your power on the basis of equality and real partnership. And when you do that, you will find genuine nationalist and republican partners. Or they can pander to rejectionists who abhor equality, fairness and parity of esteem. So Richard Haas is coming to Ireland next month to chair all party discussions. We of course will approach these talks with the objective of advancing the peace process and further underpinning the political institutions. We want to see agreement on parades, on flags and emblems, and on dealing with the legacy of the past. But let me be very, very clear and let the Orange Order understand, the Haas talks are not about replacing the Parades Commission to satisfy the demands of the Orange Order. They're about much more than that. I am entirely comfortable with unionists seeking to express their British identity in a sensible and non-confrontational fashion. Likewise, I expect them to acknowledge and recognize my Irishness in the same spirit. I do not believe that it is too much to ask or indeed to expect. So the Haas talks can succeed, but only if everyone approaches them in a proper spirit. Confidence in the political process can be built. Progress on difficult issues can be made, but we cannot do this on our own. We need unionist leaders who are willing to be partners in peace. John Joe McGurr would have understood well the events of the past month. He would have not been in the least surprised. He would also have understood well the plight of many young people across this island, especially in this region, once again facing the prospect of immigration. And of course, partition has distorted the economy of this and other areas. The best way for the people of Leipzig to honour the memory of John Joe McGurn is to work harder on what he worked for, a real republic, a united Ireland based on the principles of equality and social justice for all. For counties like Leitrim and towns like Bottle Moor, all Ireland cooperation is absolutely key to economic development and job creation. 
for the Republicans of Leitrim. I would say that if you wish to ensure John Joe McGuire's legacy and to maintain it and build upon it, you need to build an organised Sinn Féin throughout this county and increase our party's representation at all levels. That's the path that John Joe set us on 60 years ago. It is a path which offers a peaceful and democratic way to a united Ireland. Of course, there are local and European elections next year, and this provides a real opportunity to increase the Sinn Féin representation on Leitrim County Council and to elect a Sinn Féin MEP in the North West constituency. So I call on the people of Fallon the Moor and of Leitrim to get behind the Sinn Féin EU candidate, Matt Carty. It's time to put a voice into Europe that will stand up for the ordinary people of this region. In 1957, at the gravesides of those who were killed at Eden Tubber, George o. McGuire said, The tragedy which brought to a sudden end the lives of five great Irishmen is a tragedy of the Irish nation, the tragedy of an Ireland that is unfree and divided. These men came from the north and the south to join together to end the tragedy of our nation and her people. This generation of Irish Republicans I am proud to say, have brought conflict to an end. We have put in place a political process and strategy which can end partition, division and inequality. We need to always move ahead along that road and I believe that we are well up to that task. We have an opportunity to realise the objective for which John Joe dedicated his life, a united, independent Irish Republic it's not rhetoric for us, it is a real and live political project which if we are prepared to work hard and want even more people to our objective, I believe will be achieved. So that's a responsibility that we all share. And it has been a, a great honour for me to be with you this evening. Fantastic to see such a, a, a very large turnout which clearly shows that John Joe Brady, the McGuire family, have not been forgotten. They have a special place in the hearts and minds of Republicans, not just in Baltimore and Leitrim, but throughout Ireland. And I was very privileged to have got to know John Joe and to regard him as one of the great leaders of our struggle and great representatives of Irish Republicanism, not just in Leitrim, but on the national stage. So. It has been a real honour to be here. I want to thank the organisers for the invitation to come. Let's go forward to what is our primary political objective. Yes, it is about equality. It is about justice. It is about freedom. It is primarily about bringing about by purely peaceful and democratic means our entitlement to Irish reunification and an Irish sovereign republic. Gorabina, Mila, my order.